The climate crisis is a reality that we can no longer ignore. Communities across the planet are already responding, but collectively we can do better. How do we create a future where we prepare for the risk of disasters in time? Where we save lives, adequately protect our assets, minimize our losses, and effectively adapt to the challenges of climate change? We have the means to prepare for what is coming, but we need to address the constraints that are keeping us from doing this well. Data is the invisible ingredient at the root of every weather and climate forecast. We often take it for granted, yet it is often weak or missing. Even if we can't always see the critical role weather data and forecasts play in our everyday life, they are our greatest assets in the face of an increasingly unpredictable climate. Sometimes, having reliable weather and climate data is at its heart, the very difference between life and death. We know there are big gaps in weather data, especially in low-income countries and small island states, that are particularly vulnerable to climate change and extreme weather. In the Pacific, these climate-driven superstorms, the rising seas and changing weather patterns have been our new normal for some time. Before a storm strikes, Every minute of advance notice saves lives and property. Several countries in the region have in the past experienced hurricane losses amounting to multiples of their gross domestic product. Such devastation makes it extremely difficult to attain our goals of optimizing weather observation networks, critical to the provision of data to quantify the impact of weather systems. This is not only a local problem, the impacts of the lack of data are global. While these observations are crucial for making better local weather predictions, the information also feeds into global models that in turn support local climate services for early warning systems, adaptation and mitigation. The benefits are clear. It's a win-win situation from local to global and back again. This is a very powerful way to adapt to climate change. Once you have better early warning services, you can much better prevent the negative impacts of disasters, flooding, drought, uh, sea level rise, storms and the heat waves. Yet the long-term collection and sharing of weather observations data is a huge challenge for many countries. Many developing countries, including several in Africa, do not have the capacity to generate basic weather and climate observation data. They need to be able to generate real-time data to inform planning, emergency preparedness, and management of climate change. In this new era of economic climatique, the data meteorologic s'avère être des données economic and the partage of these information is absolutely vital. The data gaps represent lost opportunities. When we invest in countries where data is lacking, the socio-economic benefits far outweigh the financial costs. So much of our economic and other activity can be disrupted or damaged by unanticipated weather or climate events and trends. Sectors such as agriculture, water, energy, transport and construction are particularly sensitive and their productivity and functioning is highly dependent on good data on weather and climate. Helping developing countries to comply with their commitments to collect and share minimum quality weather data could result in some 5 billion US dollars in global benefits annually. The Systematic Observations Financing Facility will allow to deliver those benefits. According to a recent World Bank report, there are three types of benefits. First, avoiding losses. Second, optimizing production processes. Third, improving social and environmental benefits. By providing financial support to least developed countries, and small island developing states, not only for capital investment, but also for operations and maintenance. 
the Systematic Observations Financing Facility strikes at the heart of the problem and will ensure the benefits of investments in observational capacity are sustained. I've called for a breakthrough on adaptation and finance ahead of COP26 in Glasgow this year. I've also called on donors, the multilateral development banks and private finance institutions to work with vulnerable countries on the development of innovative financial instruments to support resilience building. These countries stand on the front line of the climate crisis. They need significantly more support 